The National Museum of Funeral History provides a fascinating and surprisingly whimsical tour of mortuary customs and rituals from around the globe. So if you assume that a funeral museum would be a real downer, you'd be dead wrong. Robert, right? Correct. Correct. Welcome. You've got a bunch of hearses in here. Correct. Actually, they're hearses from various um, ages. This particular one is all made out of wood. Even the curtains on the side there. Correct. The Japanese did hearses right. In Japan, this is actually used to transport the casket to the crematorium. And then the family comes in and does a ceremony, picking it through the cremains with chopsticks, placing them into an urn. That's challenging, picking up cremains with chopsticks. With chopsticks. I can barely pick up a shrimp. <laughs> a little bit different. Thanks for the memories. This is prayer cards invitations to funerals, and um, many different memorabilia from celebrity funerals that we have. You've got Marlon Brando, Frankenstein. Here you have Marilyn Monroe's actual what? This is a real facade from her tomb. You have some very fancy looking caskets here. Whose is this? This particular one was actually from an acrylic manufacturer. It was a demonstration piece for him. So it wasn't just somebody greedy that wanted to be buried with all their money. No. This one is completely glass, and there was only three of them that are still in existence right now. It was actually so heavy. You needed 30 pallbearers to take it. <laughs> Basically. What's the difference between a casket and a coffin? A casket is actually rectangular. A coffin would take the shape of the body. This casket fascinates me. It's a casket for three people. It was actually made for a family. Uh, the, the, the two adults and the child in the middle. Correct. Gift for the obvious, this side up. <laughs> the, the shipping label. This is actually made from the early 1900s. They call it a cruciform casket because of the shape of it. It looks like fur. It does look like, it's just crushed velvet. It's faux fur. Faux fur, if you want to call it faux fur. There's nothing wrong with faux fur. <laughs> I agree. I, I came here expecting this place to be sort of depressing and macabre, but it, it, it's the cheeriest funeral museum I've ever been to. <laughs> it's the only funeral museum the only I've ever funeral. been to. Well, actually, we're the largest in the country. What's this flame in the corner here? The, the flame in the corner is actually the original John F. Kennedy eternal flame before the permanent one was put in. Eternal seems to mean permanent, so Correct. you'd think that would still be there. Well, it was the initial one until everything was set. It was temporarily eternal. There you go. Is that there safe to go. say? We're actually coming through the section through the history of embalming. Obviously, embalming started with the Egyptians. They would come in and remove the brain and so on, and it's a part of the embalming process. I'd prefer to be buried with my brain, frankly. I agree. These are what we call fantasy coffins from Ghana. They will make it for what the person uh, liked in life, what they did as far as a, a work, hobby, hobby or, or work or whatever the case may be. Yamaha. Could have been a fisherman, could have been someone that liked boats. Even got a throttle. There's the crab, the lobster, the chicken, the bull, the tiger. This guy just liked driving. Just like cars. And uh, this one liked squid. No, it's actually a leak. We don't talk about funerals and death, and this is a place where you can come and really learn about it. Maybe we'll feel more comfortable with death. Absolutely. On experiencing the museum. And that's kind of our goal. We want you to be comfortable here. Robert, what is the museum's motto? Any day above ground is a good one. Enough said.